Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. This is my Pulitzer Prize reaction video. I just want to quickly explain how it's going to go. So you're going to see some footage of me watching the Pulitzer Prize live stream announcement. I was nervously getting ready for it. I'm going to splice in a piece of my Pulitzer Prize prediction video where I talked about the book that ultimately won, The Netanyahu's. So it's gonna be a little bit back and forth, but that's the structure we're gonna take. This was a surprise. Jur the jury this year chose chaos, for sure, because the three books that made the finalists are definitely lesser known. I hadn't even heard of two out of the three, and it's just, it's wow. So. Wow. We'll talk more about it as the video goes along, but that's your setup for this. Let's get into it. Wow. I have the live stream pulled up. They are currently working through the journalism categories, but we should be getting close to the fiction category. They are currently doing breaking news photography, and I think after that there will be two more categories before we get to fiction. I don't know if I'm going to use this footage because... It might not turn out well if you're watching it. I clearly did. I have my OU t-shirt on to support Honoré Fanon Jeffers, the author of The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, who is the person I predicted would win the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction this year. And I'm really just hoping she does win. I would be very happy to see that outcome. So hopefully this t-shirt will end up being a good luck charm. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, they are still doing breaking news photography. I will say... In the past week, Honoré Fanon Jeffers has been just on fire on Twitter with all of the recent news about the Supreme Court and Roe versus Wade, and she has done so in a way that has really added layers to the narrative of the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, and she has been a really great presence in interviews. She's a great advocate for herself and her own work, so it'll be interesting to see if that pays off with a Pulitzer Prize today. It's getting real getting exciting. I'm all nervous. I usually don't get this excited about wanting someone to win a Pulitzer Prize for fiction because it's such a wild card. It's so difficult to predict. But I really want Honoré Fanon Jeffers to win a Pulitzer Prize for fiction. And I feel like I'm going to be devastated if she doesn't. So <laughs> get ready to see me upset in a moment if it, that is not what turns out to be the case. I hope at least Honoré Fanon Jeffers will be a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. I think she definitely would deserve that. Oh. All right, they are doing audio reporting right now. I'm stressed. <laughs> I'm really stressed. I'm usually not this stressed about a Pulitzer Prize for Fiction announcement, but like I said, I'm usually not this invested in wanting someone to win, and I, I, I definitely want Honoré Fanon Jeffers to win. <laughs> I could be setting myself up for a big failure if she doesn't win. What are you going to do? Okay, we should be getting to fiction next. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. Oh, for public service. So another category before we get to fiction. So my stress is just going to continue. Ah. Oh my god, I'm stressing. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with myself. <laughs> okay, public service goes to the Washington Post. Here we go. They're getting into letters, drama, and music. Fiction should be first. But if they want to mess with my head, they'll make it wait. Ah, they're going to make it wait. We're doing biography first. Goes to Chasing Me to My Grave, an artist's memoir of the Jim Crow South, the late Winfred Rembert, as told to Aaron Kelly. That's probably a really interesting book. I can't believe they're making me wait for fiction. <laughs> They'll probably announce that last. Watch what's going to happen. Okay, general nonfiction is next. An Invisible Child is the winner. I'm really happy for Andrea Elliott. That sounds like a very interesting book, and I, d I do want to read it at some point. So hopefully I'll get around to that now that it has won the Pulitzer Prize for general nonfiction. Okay, here comes history. A tie. Wow. The winners are Covered with Night by Nicole Eustace. And I'm still stressing about fiction. I can't even really pay attention. <laughs> and Cuba, an American History by Ada Fur. Okay, that cover looks familiar. I wish they would just show the cover when they do this. <laughs> 
It's making me so stressed. Ah, fiction. Here we go. Finalist star. The Netanyahu's by Joshua Cohen. Wow. Monkey Boy by Francisco Goldman. I have not even heard of that book. And Palmares by Ga Gail Jones. I haven't heard of that book either. It's going to be an upset. It goes through the Netanyahu's by Joshua Cohen. Wow. I had it in my bullet surprise prediction video, but I thought it was like a long shot. Wow, it's about the ambiguities of the Jewish American experience presenting ideas and disputes as volatile as its tightly wound plot. Wow. Wow. And they're awarding a special citation. I just want to make sure it's nothing to do with anything literary, but like that's to the journalists of the Ukraine. All right. So I did cover the Netanyahu's in my Pulitzer Prize prediction video, and I thought I felt a little silly. I'm going to see if I can insert what I said about the book here so you can watch it. The next book feels like a total left field selection, but the P Prize site also has it on their list. I'll explain. It's the Netanyahu's, an account of a minor and ultimately even negligible episode in the history of a very famous family by Joshua Cohen. This was on the New York Times 100 notable list, but I didn't even notice it on that. I'm going to call it a lovable long shot. The hardest thing about predicting the Pulitzer is that sometimes the award goes to a relatively obscure choice. And so how do you identify which relatively obscure book has a shot against the heavy hitters? Well, the Pulitzer sometimes likes quirky comedies that play with familiar forms, which means they could be enamored of this book, which blends fiction and nonfiction and plays with the form of the campus novel. The publisher's website describes it as, quote, a wildly inventive, genre-bending comedy of blending identity and politics that finds Joshua Cohen at the height of his powers, end quote. That sounds like it could be pretty good for the Pulitzer. I'm still calling it a long shot, and I admit... I hadn't even heard of this book until I saw it on the P Prize site. But when I looked into it, it does start to feel like a total left field choice that the Pulitzer could actually go for. Okay, so I pulled up all three of the books. The Netanyahu's, an account of a minor and ultimately even negligible episode in the history of a very famous family by Joshua Cohen is published by the New York Review of Books. Like I said, I have heard of it. I had it in my Pulitzer Prize prediction video. I'm going to have to find a copy of this book now. I don't know if it is available on audio anywhere. I might have to order it from the Montana Book Company. It is in paperback. Uh, I think it was only released in paperback. According to the New York Review of Books website, it was a New York Times Notable Book of 2021, a Wall Street Journal Best Book of 2021, a Kirkus Best Fiction Book of 2021. It has praise from Taffy Brodesser Ackner, who was the author of um, a book that was a finalist for the National Book Award, whose Fleischman is in Trouble, something like that. Wow. So here is the blurb of the Netanyahu's on the New York Review of Websites. Corbin College, not quite upstate New York, winter 1959 through 1960. Reuben Bloom, a Jewish historian but not an historian of the Jews, is co-opted onto a hiring committee to review the application of an exiled Israeli scholar specializing in the Spanish Inquisition. When Benzion Netanyahu shows up for an interview, family unexpectedly in tow, Bloom pay plays the reluctant host to guests who proceed to lay waste to his American complacencies. Mixing fiction with nonfiction, the campus novel with the lecture, the Netanyahu's is a wildly inventive, genre-bending comedy of blending identity and politics that finds Joshua Cohen at the height of his powers. I don't know anyone who has read this book. I think I saw it in a recent haul from Rick McDonald because he was doing that New York Review of Books things in April. I, I don't know if he's read it yet. Um, he's the only person I know who I think has actually purchased a copy of this book. So, wow, this is definitely an upset year. Uh, I think there were a lot of big contenders for it and the three finalists are definitely lesser known books. So that's fascinating. Okay, I just took the dogs outside. I'm still processing. This is wild. But I wanted to do a little bit of an update because it looks like David Duchovny reads the audio in part. There are three narrators, including Joshua Cohen, for the audiobook of the Netanyahu's. And David Duchovny is one of them. What? 
Unfortunately, the audio is not available on any of my subscription apps, and I don't really want to purchase the audio right now. So what I did is I called Montana Book Company, and they, their distributor does not have any copies, and they had to order it from the publisher. So what I'm going to say is, if you are interested in ordering the Netanyahu's, maybe do it quickly, because my guess is that there's not a very big supply of this book right now. So if you don't get an order from this initial shipment of whatever is available, you might end up needing to wait while they reprint. So it could be a couple of weeks with the supply chain. It could be a while. So that's my best recommendation right now. I still can't believe this. Wow. <laughs> Quickly, let's take a look at the books that were the finalists because they are completely unknown to me. First, Monkey Boy by Francisco Goldman. It is described as a novel of enormous achievement. Monkey Boy tells the tale of Francisco Goldberg, a middle-aged writer who grapples with the challenges of family and love, legacies of violence and war, and growing up Guatemalan and Jewish in America. It says Francisco Goldman has published five novels and two books of nonfiction. His novels have been finalists for several prizes, including twice the Penn Faulkner Prize. Wow. So I'm going to leave this tab open and I'm going to look into that a little more closely once we're done. Sounds interesting. I would potentially be interested in reading it. And Palmares by Gail Jones. Here we go. It was an NPR Books We Love 2021 selection. It looks like it was on a lot of like best of the fall and things like that and then kind of disappeared uh, off of best of lists. The New York Times Book Review has a quote, This story shimmers, shakes, wails, moves to rhythms long forgotten in many ways, wholly a masterpiece. The epic rendering of a black woman's journey through slavery and liberation set in 17th century colonial Brazil, the return of a major voice in American literature. First discovered and edited by Toni Morrison, Gail Jones has been described as one of the great literary writers of the 20th century. And I haven't heard of her, so now I'm feeling really bad about myself. Now for the first time in over 20 years, Jones is ready to publish again. Palmaris is the first of five new works by Gail Jones to be published in the next two years, rewarding longtime fans and bringing her talent to a new generation of readers. I'm intrigued. Intricate and compelling, Palmaris recounts the journey of Almeida, a black slave girl who comes of age on Portuguese plantations and escapes to a fugitive slave settlement called Palmares. Following its destruction, Almeida embarks on a journey across colonial Brazil to find her husband lost in battle. Her story brings to life a world impacted by greed, conquest, and colonial desire. She encounters a mad lexicographer, desperate to avoid military service, a village that praises a god living in a nearby cave, and a medicine woman who offers great magic at a greater price. Combining the author's mastery of language and voice with her unique brand of mythology and magical realism, Jones reimagines the historical novel. The result is a sweeping saga spanning a quarter century with vibrant settings and unforgettable characters steeped in the rich oral tradition of its world. Of Gail Jones, the New Yorker noted, her great achievement is to reckon with both history and interiority and to collapse the boundary between them. Like nothing else before it, Palmaris embodies this gift. I'm a little bummed that didn't win <laughs> after that really great explanation of the book. I haven't read any of these three books, so I'm going to have to catch up on this. Again, this feels like a very surprising year. Lots of upsets all around, but Palmares sounds really interesting, and I'm very sad it flew un under my radar all year <laughs> since it was released. It has a quote from Tayari Jones. I did not like an American marriage. That's the one thing that makes me hesitate about this. I know a lot of people did like it. I would definitely want to try that book, but wow. Let's see if we can find any more information about Joshua Cohen, our new Pulitzer Prize winner. Okay, here is a website. It has lots of praise for the book, but it doesn't really have much about Joshua Cohen. So I'm gonna have to rely on Wikipedia for information because although the Wikipedia page does not have the Netanyahu's, it does have those previous books. All right, Joshua Aaron Cohen, born 1980s, an American novelist and story writer best known for his works Wits, Book of Numbers, and Moving Kings, and now the Netanyahu's and the Pulitzer Prize that comes along with it. Uh, Cohen grew up in Atlantic City, New Jersey, spent his summers on Cape May, New Jersey, and went to school at Truckee Hebrew Academy before transferring to Mainland Regional High School. He currently lives in Red Hook, Brooklyn. He reads both German and Hebrew and has translated works in both languages into English. 
He attended the Manhattan School of Music and studied composition. Cohen does not have an MFA and has expressed disdain for the degree. In 2017, Grant Magazine named him to its decennial list of the best young American writers. Cohen lived in various cities in Eastern Europe between 2001 and 2006, working as a journalist. Cohen's works have received critical acclaim. In an interview conducted by Cohen for the LA Review of Books, Harold Bloom said, Call It Sleep by Henry Roth, Miss Lonely Hearts by Nathaniel West, Sabbath's Theater by Philip Roth, and quite possibly your book, Book of Numbers, are the four best books by Jewish writers in America. Your Moving Kings is strong and rather hurtful, but that helps validate it. Book of Numbers, however, is shatteringly powerful. I cannot think of anything by anyone in your generation that is so frighteningly relevant and composed with such continuous eloquence. There are moments in it that seem to transcend our impasses. Wow. So, by all rights, a very talented writer. I, a little sad. I was really unfamiliar with him until this happened as well. I had certainly never heard of him before. I uncovered the Netanyahu's to include in my Pulitzer Prize prediction video. So, wow, what an upset. There were a lot of really big contenders. The three finalists were definitely smaller books by lesser known voices. And I haven't read them, so I can't fault it yet, but I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research and dig a little more. I'll probably talk a little more about this in my Friday Reads video because I'm gonna have, definitely going to have to catch up. And when I'm done recording, I'm going to have to see where these books are available so I can catch up to them. But wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I am sad for Honoré Fanon Jeffers. I really thought the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, and I still think it would have been a very deserving winner of the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. But I haven't read these three books, so I feel like I can't really say that I knew better <laughs> until I've read them. And you know, I can't say I know better anyway, because literature is subjective. And I know people always want things to go to the best possible book, but how you define that is really up in the air. And I'm going to point again to the video that I did last week about the Pulitzer Prize controversy of 2012, where there were three finalists, but no winner, because Michael Cunningham's essays about his experience being on the jury. By the way, I don't think they said who the jury members were. So let me see if they've updated the Pulitzer Prize website to see if we have that information now. Here we go. The jury was Courtney Hodell, Chair, Director of Writers Programs at the Whiting Foundation, Chris Abani, Board of Trustees Professor of English at Northwestern University, Tom Beer, Editor-in-Chief of Kirkus Reviews, Deborah Hurd, former executive director of the Hurston Wright Foundation, and Sam Sachs, a fiction columnist for the Wall Street Journal. So there's your jury, and um, I'm going to have to catch up on these books. And they, of course, those seem like very well-known people <laughs> uh, whose opinion about books can certainly be trusted. So we'll see. If you have read the Netanyahu's or Palmares or Monkey Boy, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you think about this. I'm still sad for Honoré Fanon Jeffers. If you are as well, let me know. Let me know what you were rooting for in the comment section. And we'll, let's let's continue talking about it. I, I love this announcement, so I, I don't know if I love this particular announcement yet. I'm gonna have to wait until I read the Netanyahu's to find out for sure, but I'm always excited about the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. We'll continue talking about it and I'll leave it there for now. As always, I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.